700 pounds. I like making videos about that, about my art, and just about my daily life. And my channel over on YouTube where I was doing all of that stuff got deleted. I am here. I'm going to be too much right now. They say you never really know someone. World, before we start, we would like to send our thoughts and prayers to the loved ones of Matthew Tressler, who fell victim to the abominable acts described in this case. Before we dive in, let's take a moment to congratulate the sponsor of today's Fear Files video, Lane Shadow Legends, who are celebrating for years as one of the top RPG games out there. Whether you're already a seasoned Raid player or looking for a new game that's challenging with a cool fantasy setting, Lane's three year anniversary celebration has got an amazing free package for you. Raid is one of the most cohesive gaming experiences in the battle collection RPG genre. It's grown bigger every year, with new content and game modes introduced every couple of months. Here's just a few of those additions. The game mode Doomtown introduced a whole new world of bosses to slow and sprawling over 120 levels. As a high-level collection RPG, Raid started with hundreds of unique characters and bosses, but its creators have since come up with more and more new champions. Check out these sketches. And of course, no review can end without addressing the newest and latest addition to Raid, the Hydra Clan Boss. It's the biggest, baddest, and scariest boss ever to set foot into a raid. This monster has multiple heads, each with a different ability, and requires different strategy to destroy. This month, the raid's celebrating its three-year anniversary, and they've got an insane amount of things in store. We're talking to new champions, new artifact sets, and a full month of special events and tournaments with some of Raid's best ever prizes on offer, including badass champions, piles and piles of shards, and tons of other goodies. There has never been a better time to discover Raid. If you're not already playing, hit the link in the description and you'll get a special, huge birthday package worth $40. You'll get three free champions at once. Misery Core, Tiger Soul, Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, Force XP Brews, and Spirit Brews. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. All new and existing players can get free birthday gifts worth over $25. Once you're in-game, after clicking on the links, just enter the promo code Three Years Raid to get your hands on everything. Simple. Just click the link in the description and we'll see you in the game. This story takes us to Riverview, an area southeast of Tampa, Florida. Riverview lies on the shoreline of the Alafia River and is one of the oldest settlements in the state. With its big houses and parks, lakes, and nearby nature trails, Riverview is a favorite among families and couples looking for a place to settle down. It was in Riverview that 26-year-old Melissa Turner and 25-year-old Matthew Trussler bought their first house on White Barn Way in December of 2018. Matthew posted videos of their new house on his Facebook page. In this clip, we see a glimpse of a red-haired Melissa vacuuming the sofa and the cat and the sound of the pair laughing in the background. If social media were real life, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was a happy young couple living in domestic bliss. The reality was anything but. In fact, it would end like this. But let's start with the woman Matthew Trussler was unfortunate to meet, Melissa Rose Turner. At 18, Melissa was, in her words, going through the darkest time of her life. She wasn't the woman she wanted to be. She hated her body and was struggling with depression. Melissa decided to make a change. Fast forward two years. Melissa had transformed her 
her health and her life. She had lost a hundred pounds and was fitter than she'd ever been before. Understandably, Melissa loved her new life and her new body. Maybe even a little too much. She wanted to share her body with the world and took to posting naked photos of herself anonymously on Tumblr under the handle to form Rose. One night at a party, she got to talking with a girl who had had a similar experience. Only instead of posting her images anonymously, this girl was monetizing her body via adult streaming sites. She was a cam girl or webcam model. While there's a range of things cam girls are prepared to do, the general idea is to perform live sex shows for online audiences who pay for the privilege. The very next day, Melissa streamed her first video. Three months later, she quit her two part-time jobs at Great American Cookies and Harkenders to become a full-time cam girl. She later said she only meant for it to be a short-time thing to pay off some debts. But a taste of fast, easy money is rarely easy to walk away from. And two years later, Melissa showed no signs of walking away. Besides, she'd found considerable success among her online audience, despite the competition, and it had brought her all new financial security. Within a couple of years, though, her new income stream was slowing down. Newer models were taking the lion's share of the viewer's attention. Melissa decided to try a different venue making and selling her own adult films. During her time as a cam girl, Melissa had built up quite a following. That following now happily paid for the homemade adult film clips Melissa made and promoted on her social media platforms. Those clips increasingly involved cosplay or costume play, where she would dress up and role play different characters. A common theme in Melissa's cosplay was horror. Every year for the entire month of October, Melissa would release horror-themed cosplay videos for her viewers. For anyone else, it would seem innocent enough. But in light of the events that would follow, it would come to seem more ominous than innocent. One user on a forum later wrote about Melissa's clips. She shot some really crazy stuff. She was always into bloody stuff. By 2016, Melissa was making serious money, enough to open her own studio with her then-boyfriend. According to Melissa, cam models had been complaining of not having anywhere private to stream their videos. Melissa's boyfriend spotted a business opportunity, and the pair created a space where cam models could stream their videos for a small fee. For a while, it seemed to be a winning business model, until Melissa posted this. My ex-boyfriend Dick Face, after we've been together for a while, and I have had so many girls ask me if I can, and if I can help them, blah, blah, blah. He was like, let's go to studio. Let's have cameras. I spent so much time focusing on that, focusing on other people, focusing on other shit. I feel like I could have done so much more and be so much more ahead of where I am now if I had put all that fucking time and effort into me and my shit. But it is what it is. Having this studio taught me a lot about working with other people. The studio thing just turned into me doing all the work, me finding the girls, me doing all the editing, all the setup, all the every fucking thing. I did everything and I'm so goddamn mad. Melissa now had both a failed business venture and a breakup on her hands. But within weeks, that would all fade into irrelevance because by then she had met and fallen in love with a new man. And this time, it seemed to be the real deal. 23-year-old Matthew Trussler was born and raised in Massachusetts, where he'd earned a degree for himself at Westfield State University. He'd then taken a job as a general manager of an Italian restaurant. Jenna Smith, age 24, a good friend of Matthew's, said, Matt was the most fun-loving, hard-working guy ever. He would put anybody in a good mood. By 2015, however, Matthew was ready for a change of scene. He relocated to the Tampa Bay area of Florida, where his brother, Sean Trussler, was already living, and soon found himself a job at a foam technology company. 
In 2017, Matthew met and fell in love with 24-year-old Melissa Turner. It's not clear precisely what Matthew and the cosplay actress had in common, but love is unpredictable like that. What we do know is that by late 2018, the pair had become serious enough about their relationship to purchase a house together, the two-story, four-bedroom home on White Barnes Way in Riverview. They moved in with their cats and dogs, and a short time later, they were engaged. Trussler celebrated his 25th birthday on January 11, 2019. On his Facebook page, he wrote, Quarter century later, and I've got a mortgage, a pup, four fur babies, and a wonderful girl. I'm a happy man. I also realized I'm getting older, because instead of sleeping in, my ass woke up at 6.30 without an alarm. As for Melissa's social media accounts, they had all been deleted. But among the images that have been salvaged is one of the couple in 2017 at a Halloween party. Both were covered in fake blood. It is a particularly unsettling image given that, two years later, the decorations would be up for Halloween, but this time the blood covering Melissa and Matthew would be real. There had been signs of trouble in paradise for the pair since the start, though. Later, Matthew's brother described the relationship between Melissa and Matthew as a toxic one, accusing Melissa of isolating Matthew from his family and manipulating him. A neighbor of Melissa and Matthew's described Melissa as crazy. When they first moved into the house, they had a huge party. There was a girl there trying to leave. She was screaming. I ran to the window to see what was going on. I saw the girl being dragged back into the house by her hair. It was weird. What the neighbor had seen was most likely part of a cosplay being acted out. As we know that by this time, cosplay, and particularly horror cosplay, had become a central theme in Melissa's online videos and posts. Whatever went on behind the closed doors of White Barn Way during 2019, we'll never know. We do know that within one year of moving into their expensive new home, local dispatch would receive a 911 call. It was 8.45 a.m. on October 18, 2019. Melissa Turner had just found her boyfriend's cold, blood-stained body on the back patio. She didn't know what had happened to him, she said, and had tried to perform CPR, but he was non-responsive. Detective Ryan Legass of the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department was one of the first detectives to arrive on the scene. The front lawn of the house had been adorned with ghouls and other Halloween decorations. Out on the back patio was the body of Matthew, long dead, and a distraught Melissa, still covered in dry blood. Melissa told Legass the same story she'd told the 911 dispatch operator, that she'd found Matthew and did not know what had happened to him. Legas canvassed the area for possible witnesses or homes with cameras. Around the corner, he noticed a Nest home surveillance camera on the front door of a home pointing towards the screened patio where Matthew's body still lay. Police asked Melissa to come with them to the station to answer some questions. Once there, she changed her story. Matthew had been drinking all day and had woken from a deep sleep at around 4 a.m., she said. She'd been angry, and he responded by picking up a knife. When she tried to grab it, the blade sliced her hand. Things had escalated further, and he'd scratched her neck and thrown her across the kitchen counter before strangling her. At this point, she picked up the knife and stabbed him in the back. Melissa did, in fact, have a wound on her hand, but it was more consistent with a cut acquired from a hand sliding down a silvery, bloody knife while it was being used. Matthew, meanwhile, in addition to the large wound in the middle of his back, had numerous other cuts, including a large laceration to his upper right bicep, a laceration to the middle of his chest, and a defensive wound on his right forearm. Detectives now examined the surveillance footage recorded from the home around the corner. The footage was chilling and would become the most damning evidence against Melissa and her claim of self-defense. At roughly 4.30 a.m., 
a female voice is caught saying, you stay down. This is followed by the sound of breaking glass. At 4.35 a.m., the female voice says, I hate you. Then, get up, multiple times. Two minutes later, sounds of smacking are heard and yelling. And a female voice again saying, get up. Son of fucking arrogant, I hate you. And several times, go fuck yourself. At 4.43 a.m., additional smacking noises can be heard and a male's voice, but it's unclear what is said. There is the sound of further arguing before the female voice is heard yelling, No! And then, what did I do? There was also the matter of Matthew's tongue of death. Matthew had been wearing a small watch, which measured his heart rate. That watch revealed that Matthew had no heartbeat for roughly four hours before Melissa called emergency services. According to the argument presented by prosecutors, the pair had argued before Melissa had stabbed Matthew multiple times on the pool deck patio. She had not tried to save his life, but instead waited four hours, enough time to make sure he was dead, before calling authorities. Police charged Melissa with second-degree murder, which, in the state of Florida, holds a life sentence. Melissa's trial was set to begin in February of 2022. It was delayed due to arguments in court over whether taxpayers should foot the bill for her defense. Melissa had been recorded bragging in phone calls made from jail about the amount of money she had in the bank from her online modeling career. Testimony is taking place in courtroom 55S here at the Hillsborough County Courthouse today. Jurors heard from crime scene technicians and detectives, but the most compelling evidence came in this afternoon. Nest video from a nearby home that recorded audio of the incident. As I walked up the driveway, I observed some type of surveillance uh, type cameras. Ryan Legassi, a former detective with the sheriff's office, testified he located a Nest surveillance camera at a home adjacent to the crime scene that recorded audio of the incident. Investigators contend a female voice is heard saying, you stay down, an expletive die, followed by, so arrogant, I hate you. We ended up struggling back and forth for the knife. I got my hand sliced open. When I sat down with Melissa prior to the trial, she didn't deny stabbing Matthew Trussler at the home they shared in Hillsborough County in October of 2019. But she claims she was simply trying to save her own life. He had pushed me into the countertop. I had marks on my stomach from it. And then... Uh, Turned me around and he had his hands around my throat. Attorney John Trevina is representing Turner. He questions the quality of the audio on that nest recording and believes the evidence will show jurors his client is not guilty. So if I understood correctly, you worked for the sheriff's office for about 13 years. And Several of Trussler's family members were in the courtroom today but have held off on speaking with the media. Melissa tells me her heart is broken. Losing him losing his family that I I loved as my family and Turner is expected to take the stand to testify in her own defense either Thursday or Friday the trial itself is expected to last all week if the jurors find her guilty she could face a sentence of up to life in prison during the trial, Melissa argued that she was a battered woman who had to deal with Matthew's addiction problems and mental health issues. She'd stabbed Matthew in a moment of genuine fear for her life. Melissa Turner was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to 20 years in prison. 
So, what possessed Melissa to stab her boyfriend multiple times and leave him to bleed out on the patio of the home they purchased together? Who can say? Sometimes, there is no explanation for evil. And no sense can be made out of a senseless act of the abuse claim. Matthew's mother said, The story of the Lord control has caused me as much pain as his death. You and I both know that Matthew was the best thing that ever happened to you. If you found this story compelling, don't forget to like the video. Comment down below your take on it. And please subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that notification bell in order to stay up to date each time we reveal a new shocking case. If you have a case you'd like to see given more coverage, drop us a message in the comments. And thank you for the recent surge of support. We're grateful for every one of our subscribers. So, until next time, stay safe and keep your eyes peeled. You never know what's lurking in the shadows.